such as we believe a, a baby is a, a Muslim, trees are a Muslim, for instance. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a cat does, does his job as a Muslim. Do you have a friend? Looking lost. Yeah. What are you discussing then? We're discussing what you believe. What do you believe? We're discussing how we can help you as well. Oh, okay. Maybe guide you. I was thinking that Donald Trump is an intuitive genius, and if people don't realise this, they will never stop. He's an intuitive genius. What, what does that mean? The intuitive genius means that um, he's great at using his common sense, best judgment, intuition, and instincts to basically target the common sense, best judgment, and intuitive instincts of the American population. So basically, you're saying the American population are racist. No, I'm saying the American population are human. What's that to do with? I don't understand your point. So, are you saying Donald Trump's policies are good? No. What are you saying then? <sighs> are you just saying he's a clever man, manipulating the people, I wonder if we telling them what they want to hear? That's sort of a part of it, but it's more a case of um, uh, he's able to instantly intuit up statements. But you don't agree with him? No. Oh, that's good then. He's able to instantly intuit up statements that will serve the primary Trump aims of get Trump attention, make Trump look good, and feel great statements or plausible statements to the common sense. But doesn't Trump look bad and he's got low ratings and isn't he on the border of being pe impeached or something? Uh, it does, impeachment looks somewhat unlikely. Well, it depends whether you mean impeached or removed under the 25th Amendment, and those don't appear to be likely at the moment. So, anyway, well, what do you believe with regards to God and all that? Let's get to the nitty gritty. Are you Muslim? No. Why not? I mean, why not? Why not? I'm, I'm I mean, I tried sort of going to church for a while, but ultimately didn't. I mean, I ultimately stopped, so I hit a bit of a brick wall. Just couldn't get. Um, Born again, as it were. Why do you want to be born again? Apparently, you're supposed to get born again before you can sort of. Why would you want to be born again? Yeah, that's the problem. I don't, I don't, at the moment, I can't do it. Why? So, uh, part of being born again, from what I understand, involves. Is it accepting Jesus? Oh, said accepting Jesus into your heart and um, forgiving others for all previous sins. And that's pretty much the opposite direction that I've been going. With Why? What's wrong? Pardon? What's wrong with your life? I mean, that reminds me of the person that I was when I was younger, but not the person that I'm kind of heading in that, the direction that I'm going in. What so essentially, I've basically become less tolerant and less helpful and caring and kind and accepting. Yeah, because you're getting older and you're realising that the world owes you nothing. Pardon? Because you're getting older and you're beginning to realise the world owes you nothing. And it's a hard place. Uh, and it'll chew you up and spit you out if you allow it to. OK, now you're sounding like my, pet, my family. Uh, well, that's, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Then your parents must be correct. Yeah, but that also means that I'll never get born again at this rate. Why would you want to be born again? Wait, what religion are you again? Muslim. OK, right, well, I don't know. They keep to, they do, when you go to church, they do suggest becoming born again and reading the scripture and reading that little book they give you. Why, why not become Muslim? I don't know, really. I mean, oh, hang on, what was I going to say? Yeah, there's the scripture books. I don't know what it says in Muslim scripture, but in Christian scripture, all that thingy that the other they print to give you to read every day. Um, there's a lot of text that says you're going to come under attack because you're Christian, and then, and then somehow people wonder why the Christians seem to think they're all, they're all eyes. And, uh, a lot of the time they think, they'll say that they're under attack because you're not, you're either being neutral or you're not supporting their position. Like, that warm Christmas that Fox News keeps talking about. Uh, wait, what was your question, Mega? Why not Muslim? I, I suppose it's more a case I've never tried. Why not try? Hmm. I'm clear. Huh? I don't know. See, here's the beautiful thing about Islam, you see. Islam will give you the guidance and the boundaries that you crave and it'll give you a sense of belonging and a purpose in life and um, you won't worry about when you die you know inshallah you, you've got a good place awaiting you know that you've got um, a guide to get through this particular life you join a Muslim uh, family 1.6 billion strong and um, you'll connect your soul to its creator mm. Can, can, can you remember how you got started in your religion? Yeah, first I had to believe is there a creator or not. Before I could 
be come to religion, I had to believe in a creator. If I don't believe in a creator, then I don't think religion was going to teach me that. So I came to the conclusion there must be a creator. And then from there, I looked at a, a religion that would connect to my specification what a creator must be by necessity. So the only religion that connected to that was Islam. And um, the teachings go hand in hand with a pure society in the sense of no alcohol, no drugs, no gambling, no sexual morality, no interest dealings. Life is sweet. You know when you know your purpose and when you have your boundaries, you know what you can and you can't do? It's lovely. It's like, imagine having a kid, yeah? How old are you? I'm in my 30s. Wow, you look younger than that, man. Mm. But anyway, so when you have a kid, for example, once your kid knows its limits and boundaries and stays within them, they know they're going to be fine. They're going to be safe, secure, benefit in, whatever. They know when they cross those boundaries, there's problems coming, right? So basically, the beautiful thing about Islam, your creator gives you those boundaries. So once you know your boundaries, you know you can bounce around within them, yeah, that's what gives you the peace of mind. Um, I was pondering something about how people join religions. Because I was thinking, do they use their more their intuitive thought process or more of their rational thought process? Rational. Well, the problem. I, 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 don't, I, were, I don't know if there's going to be anything, but it, the thing is, if you things, if you use your rational thought process, there's a slight problem of you would have to know like everything about the religion before you make the decision. No. That's tends to be what. Like, no, no. What happens, you see, is Islam is not a rational choice in the sense of do I like it or not. Yeah. Once you believe Islam is the truth, you um, wh whatever it is goes. Yeah. You don't become a Muslim because you want to do something or you don't want to do something or whatever. Do you understand? So basically, to be a Muslim, you have to believe two things. You have to believe the only thing worthy of worship is God, the creator of heavens and earth, and you have to believe that Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, is his last and final messenger. Those are the two things that make you Muslim. Is it, yeah, I, um, the only uh, joining religion I've got uh, uh, any experience of, or how people get uh, what they call outreach, is of course is mostly the Christian side. So normally in that case, I find it's more likely that humans use intuitive thinking because they ultimately get talking to a person who's an existing believer and then they chat a bit and then they learn a bit about the religion and they, then they intuitively common sense and feel that, yeah, actually this is a religion I want to know more about. And then they start going to the actual Rationale. place of, um, uh, to the actual uh, place of worship. No, no, no. Because what happens then, this becomes an emotional decision because you feel happy and, and happy clappy and I'm feel sure wanted and belong. Say, it's more a case of pla place of belonging. Correct. Or yeah, feels true. Or yeah, but that's, but that's subjective. That's just emotional. We know you asked about whether it's intuitive or rational. Yeah. It's got to be rational. Yeah, but I find humans tend to use their intuitive thought process rather than the rational one. Yeah, but at least initially. No, but intuitive is just subjective, though, isn't it? Subjective? Yeah, it means basically you might think something or feel something, but it might not be true. So you, you have to yeah. determine what's the whole point of what we're doing here. It's not so you can find somewhere to belong and, and be happy and content in a social sort of environment. It's to de establish the truth, mate. Is it because you're going to die one day? And you're going to face your creator one day, and you're going to be held accountable for your life one day. Now. As Muslims and Christians go, we can't reconcile one another. Yeah. So if you become a Christian, for example, um, you'll be damned in Islam. Yeah. If you become a Muslim, you'll be damned in Christianity. Yeah. Because they're polar opposites with regards to what saves you. He says, we don't believe Jesus died for our sins. We don't believe we need God needs blood to forgive us. We just believe that we have to repent for our sins. And if we harm somebody else, we need to get some forgiveness from that person before we can ask God. This is what we believe. Whereas Christians have this idea that they don't have to worry about that because Jesus died for their sins. So it's, it's, it's kind of nice. You can understand when people join Christianity because there's no work involved. There's no effort involved. It's just a beautiful, beautiful story, man. You know, imagine. You don't have to do anything. Eat what you like, do what you like, whatever. Don't worry, Jesus died for your sins. You're expected to sin because you're weak. Your, your good works are filthy rags before God. Therefore, just believe Jesus died for your sins. That's lovely, man. That should be the fastest growing religion in the world, you know that. I don't know if that's what they, they tell me in church. Yeah. I think they were, I think they were supposed to say, uh, Jesus died for your sins, and you're supposed to keep working at it. Right, as in, not sinning that much, but... I'll but but, that but didn't put, but what Paul says in the Bible, your, your good works are filthy rags before the Lord. Yeah. Sorry, what? Your good works are filthy rags before the Lord. Uh, 
So basically, it is by your faith you shall be saved, not by your works. We believe the other way around. We don't believe, belief is one thing, obviously, and by belief we act upon that and we follow the guidance from God. And by doing that, that's what saves us. Ultimate of course, the by the grace and mercy of Allah. In fact, that's what Jesus himself preached as well, that you have to continue with your works, yeah. abide by the law. Yeah. <clears throat> not sure, not sure what else to talk about at the moment. Anyway, have a great day. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay. How's it going? <laughs> Let's see, I'm closest to... The Still one more? Uh, yeah, it's cool.